Okay guys, how's everybody doing? Um, I've gotten some requests. Last week I caddied for a student at Corn Ferry Tour Q School. And between my college players and professionals and some people on Instagram, I've gotten some requests for what I had learned at Q School. So I'm happy to have individual conversations with some people, but I thought maybe I could um, share some of the things that I learned here on a video on Instagram. And you know, whether it's Q School or any tournament, I think this is relative to all of them. I think Q School, to me, always kind of when I was playing, I think I played in that seven or eight times. You know, it's kind of the Olympic qualifying for our sport, meaning you get one try a year and you kind of have to bring your good stuff out to make it. Because last week it took 26 under, one, and 10 under to make it. And my student that I tagged for shot 10 under to make it on the number with um, shooting four under his last nine holes to make it. So we're going to get into that a little bit as well. I was super proud of him. And I also had, just like I went through in my career, uh, a few people have some heartbreaking misses. It played well. You know, you shoot say 900 par and you barely miss. So, you know, kind of we'll start out with just, I guess the important thing that I saw is leading up to big events like that, if you prepare well all the time, you really should change nothing. You know, I always have noticed when you see the player down on the end of the range, their dad or their caddy and they're panicking and they're, you know, not doing their normal system checks and stuff, but they're, they're searching. You know, you got to show up with the race car ready to race. You rarely are going to really find good enough stuff at a big event like that. Um, panicking at the last minute. It happens. You make an adjustment and things go way better. But for the most part, all the preparation that leads up to that moment should be done well in advance. So you start there. Prepare like you always prepare, which is you should always be preparing to be at your best at all times. So I, I wouldn't really change anything going into a big event. Two. You know, I, I would say try and normalize all your tournaments as much as you can, where you make the environment just like any other event or any other day, you know, which is how you practice, your warm up, your preparation, where you eat, what you're talking about and thinking about as you play. And again, all the old cliches of golf, you know, which is just playing one shot at a time. And we're going to get into why that's so important, like even uh, in regards to the last nine holes that we had where David made it. And then a couple of the physical things that I noticed while I was there. Number one, the, the people that are playing well are driving it straight, right? They're not in trouble. They're not hitting provisionals. Um, they're not losing unnecessary strokes off the tee. So a huge skill everyone has to develop because that travels in place anywhere in the world is, 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 is long an advantage, 100%, if it's straight. But all of the bad golf I see when I play in tournaments, observe them or go and caddy at them like last week. The, the people that are struggling are too crooked. I mean, that's just, uh, anybody wants to debate that, I'm happy to do it. You, you can't play from a bush and you can't play from out of bounds and you can't play from hazards. So you have to be able to drive it straightish. It doesn't have to be in every fairway, but you've got to be able to have a pretty narrow window of angular miss, you know, where, and by the way, the longer you get, the more of those angles have to be smaller. So that would be number one, you know, get, get a dependable shot off the tee that, that goes into play. Two, you know, really clean inside of 100 yards, meaning that if you have 100 yards or less that you, you feel like you're going to get the ball down in two a lot and inside of 20 yards that you think you're going to get the ball up and down almost every time. Uh, you know, yeah, you're going to get some really hard short-sighted shots here and there where you won't. But if you can really get very clean inside of, say, 20 yards and develop a, a, a system with your wedges and stuff that you hit close a lot, that will allow the shorter player to bridge the gap to the longer player. Also, if you're in trouble or whatever, you know, you can lay up to your, to your strength and still feel like you're going to hit it close. And I think that that's a huge, massive thing I saw last week as well, that, you know, the players that are playing well are, are, are capitalizing on the par fives. They're getting the ball up and down when they occasionally miss a green and, and they're eliminating mistakes. And then three, being a, a, a good putter. You don't have to be a great putter. You have to be a good putter. And what I mean by that is inside of 10 feet where you feel like you're going to have a very high make percentage and that you're going to make some outside. Yeah. On your good weeks, the, the guy who shot 26 under last week, I'm guessing made some long putts and beat up the profiles, but even to shoot say 10, under, um, you know, you've got to putt clean inside of 10 feet. You can't miss a bunch of shorties. Those are how you save your pars and you get your free birdies. When you get a par five, you hit an iron close or a wedge close. And it's kind of how you keep your momentum going within rounds, you know, where you occasionally make a six, seven, eight, 10 foot or 15 footer to save a par or something in the key moment. So I think, you know, good point. So, Driving straightish, uh, clean short game, 
in being a really, you know, a, a good putter inside of 10 feet. I think, you know, especially five feet. Those things are essential skills. Those are Philip Dawson's three rules of being a high-level competitive player. If you do those three things well, it's really kind of hard to screw it up. Now, what I really learned from the event. Number one, never panic. Um, David actually went out in the first round and didn't play that poorly and shot a couple over. We didn't change anything. I mean, nothing seemed that far off to me. It's a big event. Maybe you over try a little bit in the first round, right? And so we just kept going through the process of what we had prepared on our way there. Um, the second round, he had a really good round going and finished a little bit poorly. Same thing. Don't panic, right? We didn't even really do, we had a long lightning and thunder delay that day. We really didn't even do any post-round practice even though he finished poorly because he was six under the first 14 holes playing beautifully. So there was nothing really to change, right? It was all just execution. We got some weird weather and hit one bad tee shot. And then, then to get the tournament, he shot seven under in the third round. You can't force those rounds. They just happen. You start on the first hole and you try and hit a quality tee shot and you work through your process all day and you just play. And that day it ended up shooting seven under for us, which obviously was key for him making it because we were even par after two rounds and you know the number was trending where it was gonna be somewhere in the neighborhood of nine to 12 under somewhere it was gonna make it. So that was a big round. But again, it's not like we went out that morning and I said, hey, let's play aggressive and go for everything. And no, you just keep trying to execute proper shots. The last day, uh, we played nicely on the front. We shot one over, just didn't get much going. And with nine holes to play, obviously the whole tournament's on the line. And I was super proud that when we started the back nine, we really just kept trying to execute his routine and his process as best we can. And typically to me, really good nines or 18 holes, don't, you can't force them. They just happen. And we even on that back nine, knowing he needed you know, say kind of a four or five under score to make it. We aimed away from a couple of flags. The 11th hole we aimed 25 feet right up in. Um, because you still just have to play proper golf. And he had a little key stretch in the back nine there where he went birdie, 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 eagle, which obviously was kind of the deciding factor to him making it. A lot of people, oh, that was clutch. Of course it was. But it wasn't like we tried anything different. Uh, we just kept trying to execute what we know uh, we picked our same lines off the tees. Uh, we picked our spots where to be aggressive and where not to be. And in the middle of there, I, I mean, it goes back to the three rules we talked about. He drove in the fairway when we did have a wedge or an iron shot. Um, he hit some close and the other thing, he made a couple of key putts. You know, he didn't make a 30 foot or anything, but he, when he hit it, he hit it inside of 15 feet. Um, uh, let's see all four of those holes and he made them all. And so that's a big key to three of them were short putts and one of them was about a 15 footer, I would say, but you still have to walk in and go through routine and hit a quality putt to make those. And then, you know, I would say really playing the last hole when you know you're around the number, um, having been in those uh, situations myself and watched other players do it, it just takes guts, right? I mean, at that point, throw technique out the window. Um, everyone's got cool technique at that level or at least technique that repeats. It's do you have the guts to stand in there and make some good swings and trust what you've built and worked for your whole life? And I mean, you just sit up and hit, and hit beautiful tee shot down the middle with the pin tucked to the right over the water. Hit it, literally landed it on the spot we were looking out about twenty five feet short left, and uh, hit a beautiful putt that just grazed the edge and tapped it. Now we easily still could have missed. A guy had to finish three over his last two holes just for us to tie for twenty fifth. Had he missed? He still played a clutch round. He shot 65, 69 the last two days to make it. So how do you miss? Should he hang his head? Should he question what he's working on? Because really, some of those things are out of your control, which always goes back to the cliche is that we can only control what we can control. So I know this video is a bit long, but I mean, there's just so much that I learned from the experience. I mean, I could, I could sit here and talk for another 30 minutes of what I learned last week. But I think that really sums it up. And then also, I had a really, really good player I coached for a long time barely miss. And I flew home with him and I was super proud of his attitude. He handled it like a champion. No, no real emotional attachment other than he said he was going to use it to fuel his fire to do even better and to work out and, and work harder in his game. So, you know, these are all the things that elite players do. At that level, everyone's good. It's just a matter of can you execute what you know in a big moment. And that's a duration of time to prepare for those things and really some deep self-belief. And that's why there's so few great players that can really go do it. 
So anyway, I hope you guys glean a little bit from this about you know the three physical skills. Trading every tournament is the same, where you just go through your same process and you prepare all the time. And then the oldest cliche in the book, all we can do is play one shot at a time and do the best we could on each one. And then he had the guts to go do it and a couple quick breaks for it to get done. So a um, lot to take from those experiences. Um, for any of you that you know are, are thinking about pro golf or want to play pro golf, all I can tell you is prepare really hard. There's a lot of great golfers and it's really, really tough. So anyway, if you guys have any questions, feel free to hit me up on a DM or shoot me a text. And I hope you guys took some good information from this to help you as you prepare for your tournaments in the future.